The Big Sleep was a 1978 Michael Winter film that starred Robert Mitchum in his second film portrayal of the detective Philip Marlowe. The movie is the second film version of Raymond Chandler's 1939 novel of the same name. The rest of the cast includes Sarah Miles, Candy Clark, Joan Collins, Oliver Reed, and also Jimmy Stewart as General Sternwood. The story setting was changed completely from the earlier film. In the original film, it was based in 1940s Los Angeles, but in this version, it was moved to 1970s London. The film contains material more explicit than what could only be hinted at in the 1946 version. Things such as homosexuality, pornography, and nudity. Mitchum was 60 at the time of filming. He was much older than Chandler's 33-year-old Marlowe was, or the 38-year-old Marlowe from the 1946 film, played by Humphrey Bogart, who was 44 years old at the time. The plot has Marlowe being hired by a rich, tired, old military man, played by Jimmy Stewart. He's hired to handle blackmail attempts, tracking down some pornographic photos of his daughter, and finding his missing son-in-law. But most importantly, to provide him peace of mind in his dying days. Marlowe trods down the mean streets of London as the plot grows more and more and we get dragged along with him. What really helps this movie is Robert Mitchum's definite screen presence. He's great in this role. He takes everything in as if he's seen these problems a thousand times. Candy Clark is great also as she plays the nympho young daughter with a fondness for great big men and an obsession with guns. Richard Boone rounds it out as a hired killer that's tall and craggy and mean. The film was originally developed for United Artists, as when the studio bought the Warner Brothers Library, they obtained the remake rights. It went to rank organization before eventually finding financing via Lou Grade. Michael Winter said that an American was meant to adapt it, but he didn't agree with changing the locale to Britain. He states that he changed the storyline far less than the Hawks film did. According to the director, Robert Mitchum and Richard Boone were completely snockered when they filmed the final shootout scene. He stated often that it should have been called the gunfight at Alcoholics Anonymous. Robert Mitchum was a little bit concerned that his character in rejecting advances by Candy Clark might cause audiences to think that Philip Marlowe was a homosexual. Jimmy Stewart originally turned down the role of General Sternwood as he felt since the movie was being relocated to England, he thought a British actor should play the part. He went ahead and took the role, but he really had difficulty saying his lines from time to time due to a problem with his hearing and his memory. Some of the cast was pretty shocked by his aged appearance. Robert Mitchum joked that the picture was all about corpses, but Jimmy looked deader than any of them. But believe it or not, Stewart actually outlived Mitchum by one day. Mitchum died on July 1st, 1997 at age 79, and Stewart died July 2nd, 1997 at age 89. To avoid any copyright violations, the director organized a photo session for the cover of the pornographic book that Marlowe found in the bushes. Among the models taking part in this was Lindy Benson, who became Robert Mitchum's, quote, companion for the duration of the filming. He was also stalked by two women during the production. At one point, they fought it out at his apartment trying to get close to him. And Mitchum had a way of just pissing off the reporters. One time, a BBC reporter tried to interview him, and he cussed him out and drove away to his hotel. The meaning and the relevance of the title is a euphemism for death, death being considered 
the big sleep. Candy Clark told reporters that while she was shooting her full frontal nudity scenes, she felt like it was a nightmare because she was so very modest. But she reluctantly agreed to do it in order to get cast in the role. She had to sit around all day naked in front of the crew and Robert Mitchum for the entire day of the shoot. She also got hooked on Shepard's Pie while filming the movie, and she had to have it every day. As a result, she started packing on weight during the course of filming. Certain outfits that fit in the beginning of the filming were much tighter towards the end. The car that Philip Marlowe drives is a 1954 Mercedes-Benz 220S. According to the director, they had two of these Mercedes that were reserved for the shoot. Unfortunately, Robert Mitchum wrecked one of them, and they had to use the second one to complete the film. The opening credits feature the point of view from Marlowe's car as he arrives at the Sternwood Manor, driving off the A1 motorway and driving through the actual side roads leading up to the front entrance of the manor. The closing credits feature the same point of view shot driving away from the manor, eventually entering back on the A1 South. The name of Philip Marlowe's detective agency was Philip Marlowe Commercial and Civil Investigations. In the previous Marlowe film, it had been usually known as Philip Marlowe Private Investigations. It's kind of interesting that his fee per day was 50 pounds sterling, plus expenses. Some of the movie posters featured a text preamble that read, Meet Philip Marlowe, the toughest private eye who ever wore a trench coat, slapped a dame, and split his knuckles on a jawbone. This movie was part of the 1970s revival of the hard-boiled detective movies, which included such films as Gumshoe, from 1971, Chinatown from 1974, and The Blackbird from 1975. Richard Boone broke his foot before filming began. He had already signed on to the film, and so they just incorporated that injury into the storyline. But his character only had 15 lines in the total film. Now, there was quite a bit of drinking that went on on the set. Robert Mitchum at one time impressed Oliver Reed by drinking a bottle of gin in just 55 minutes. Robert Mitchum's co-star in the film, Sarah Miles, was born in December of 1941, and she's known for her great roles in The Servant from 1963, Blow Up in 1966, and Ryan's Daughter in 1970. Her performance for Ryan's Daughter got her a nomination for an Academy Award for Best Actress. She's an actress that doesn't like to give interviews because every time she does them, she gets shot down for them. She usually says something that she really didn't mean to say or that's misinterpreted. She's constantly classified as a strange one. She's one that really studies crop circles and believes that dolphins can heal people. But the thing that really sets her apart from other actresses and puts her in that eccentric category is that she revealed in the 1970s that she drinks a small cup of her own urine every day. She states that it started when she went to a California clinic where they actually gave it to you in injection form. And she said that it cured all of her allergies. So when she realized that she couldn't afford the treatments anymore, she asked the therapist what she could do instead. And he told her, why don't you try drinking it? So that's what she did. And she's been doing it ever since. A lot of the critics didn't like this film. They compare it constantly to the original one with Bogey. But I think it's a fun film to watch. Take a look back at this old classic. Thank you so much for watching and we'll continue to chase the classics.